Hey guys, DIY Dad here, back for another video. And today we are going to play with a jackhammer, which I am not a professional with in any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but I figured out a few tips with it that I thought I would share with you and see if it helps you in your project. Here we go. If you've watched my videos you may know that I have a very kind of disastrously sloped uh, concrete patio behind my house which I had covered up with a deck which I have now removed because we're gonna build a three season here on the back of the house and I need all of this out of the way so I can actually do the footings correctly and build the structure underneath it so uh, today as I mentioned I'm gonna be playing with this this is a Hilti uh, Pro Light jackhammer which I rented from Home Depot it's a very simple, easy item to use. It's a Model TE2000 AVR. The uh, control surfaces on this are very easy. There's a button here, it's kind of dual-sided, so pushing it that way is off, pushing it this way is on. And then the weight of the tool does everything else. Pretty standard chuck, just like you have with an impact driver. So if you're looking to switch out bits, you just grab this cowl, pull it back, bit slides right out, new one clicks in. So the tip for this uh, really is that you don't need to do a lot of work with this. In fact, you shouldn't be doing work with this. The weight of the tool is going to do all of the things you need to do, but you can control it a little bit. When I started working with this, uh, because I've never done this before, I was just sort of haphazardly going in here and breaking this up and I was getting these tiny little pieces. And that's fine, they're lightweight and easy to carry. And I've got a couple of them on a trailer over here and I'm gonna haul out of the backyard in a minute. Uh, and some gloves, because you should be wearing gloves. and a mask and goggles because this thing kicks up a lot of dust and there's going to be little bits of concrete flying everywhere. Please protect yourself. So these little pieces, very easy to carry, but there were going to be a ton of them and I'm a little bit lazier than that or I want to be a bit more efficient. So what I figured out is you can actually guide the breaking of this uh, if you're just a little bit careful in the first step. What you're going to do is use your bit and you're just going to do a couple uh, relief holes. So essentially, I'm just going to have it chisel in about half inch or so in a few different spots along the way. And then as you go deeper in one of the connections, your cracks are going to naturally run from spot to spot. So here was one of my reliefs. Here was another, there was another, there was another. And as I started cutting in here, the crack formed and went right across. And now we'll get a much bigger piece. So you can see these chunks are larger squares. I've got them sized about where I can carry them comfortably. Uh, this one I'll have to break in half, but since I have cracks running this way, all I have to do is run the chisel this way and it's gonna just divide that nicely for me. The other thing I would mention is if you have a sliding door like I do, you're gonna to wanna to put something on it to protect it because you will have pieces of concrete flying. They don't fly at a high velocity, so you're not gonna get injured with this too much. What I've been doing, uh, honestly, is positioning myself right here between the door and the work and just letting my legs bounce these little pieces of concrete out of the way, which worked pretty well. Uh, only other tip I would give you is wear grubby clothes, because like I said, there's a ton of dust from this, so your pants, your shoes, your boots, whatever, are going to get beat up pretty well. So just kind of protect yourself and off you go. So not rocket science, but quite a bit of work uh, to do to haul this. I'm experimenting with hauling this using a four-wheeler and a trailer. Um, I have a hill on the side of my house, so I'm going to be doing this one section at a time just to make sure that I don't tear up my lawn too bad. Um, just kind of use your judgment on what you have access to. If you are working inside, like I said, this creates a lot of dust. I'm outside, so I do have a mask that I'm not wearing right now because I'm on video and that would look bad. But if you're inside, make sure you're wearing a good uh, respirator, something that's going to block all of this dust. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in. It uh, wouldn't be good for you at all. So as you can tell, the fun power tool-y part of this project is over, which means now I have to get to the hard part, which is picking all of this stuff up and hauling it out of here, which is going to take me the rest of the afternoon. I'm not going to bore you with all of that. So this being the end of a DIY dad video, I owe you a dad joke. And I was, as I was thinking about that and trying to figure out uh, what kind of dad joke could I do that's related to a jackhammer and a patio and that sort of thing, I kind of looked online to review a little bit of the background of the jackhammer and what I found is in reviews of the jackhammer there was one phrase used more than it had ever been used for any technology before. You know what that phrase might have been? A 
about the jackhammer, all they could really say is, this is groundbreaking technology. All right, remember with any DIY project, most important step is just to do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's gonna see the flaws unless you point them out to them. Have a great day, stay safe, catch you on the next one, bye.